Hi there and welcome back to Japan everyone. Well, to Japan and to England. Guess guess who's in Japan and who's in England? Who, who do you think? It's a bit of a bit of a racial suggestion there. It might not be who you guessed. Anyway, <laughs> so I've got a really nice, special, wonderful podcast today, I think, with someone who I've spoken to before and who I was a guest on your podcast, on your video, and now I'm getting the favour returned. So Hello, Miwa. How are you today? Hi. Hi. Nice to see you again, Harvard. <laughs> so, obviously, just to give a little introduction, obviously, you are Japanese. I am. 100%. Wow, we have a Japanese person. 100%. Sorry. <laughs> but you've obviously, you've been living in the UK for quite some time now. Um, how many years? Yes, I've been living here for in London for 23 years, nearly 24 years now. I came here nine. 1997, no, 1996, sir. So, so you, you can calculate it? Yeah. You, you've, lived in London, years. you've lived in London longer than I lived in London, basically. Oh, maybe, yeah. Because <laughs> I moved into London uh, a little bit later. And then, so, yeah, you, you've lived in London longer than I have. So we're speaking to a real genuine English person here, a real Londoner. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, I met. <laughs> that, that was actually, that was perfect. So... <laughs> So there's so many things that we've discussed before and we're going to be recovering some ground that I know you and I have discussed before, but I really wanted to get this perspective for everyone else because obviously you guys at home, I know we've had so many people, it's come up in so many of the live chats, so many of the comments, people asking about that difference between Japanese culture, Western culture, so many things that have been discussed and so often you've been listening to my opinion as I've talked basically as an outsider coming in. But I think what's really interesting is to hear the perspective of someone who's now more familiar with uh, that Western culture, but grew up in this culture and sort of seeing the differences from the other side. So, I mean, I myself have talked so much, like I say, about these things. I'm really interested, though, if you could sort of sum it up to get us kickstarted. What would you say are the main things that you really noticed after you sort of first moved to the UK? What were the things that really struck you as being different? You mean my, 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 my personal life? You mean? Yeah, just whether it be sort of about the, about the culture generally or whether it be something that you personally found was different in your life. What sort of things struck you as being different from the get-go? Right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the right answer or not. But, <laughs> there uh, are no right I, answers, no wrong I answers. I realise that, right? Uh, actually, when I met, uh, you know, non-Japanese people, even Japanese people, right? Some, some people, Eastern European, never met Japanese. <laughs> and you're the, my first Japanese friend, right? And always said, uh, please, please don't judge Japanese people through me because I'm the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand that. <laughs> no, no, I understand that, um, you know, was, I love Japan and I'm so pleased that, I mean, actually, I really feel it. I'm, I'm glad I am Japanese. Mm. You know, that's only understand after I left Japan and living here. Right. Actually, I really admire my, com uh, my country and my culture, but at the same time, I really understand why I couldn't fit in Japanese society, because yeah. I can't behave like what I should do. That's why I categorize. But what the meaning is, mm. um, because Japan has got something kind of common sense, everybody has to understand that, has yes. to follow. Yeah. Right, it's they have to be more kind of understand as a group, as a community, rather than individual. And here, it's individual is more instant, more important, more kind of valid, I would yeah. say, than you know the team. I mean, society where where maybe not all of it, but it's kind of acceptable, different opinion. I right? think. If you're I think yeah. that's very you know I mean? true. Yeah, I mean the the phrase you use actually referring to it as a team, even if even if it in, the, in um, yeah, well, it's actually that, that is interesting though because that is a way of thinking about. It. And I think that a lot of the benefits and disadvantages of both countries culturally yeah. come from that difference. So, for example, I mean, look at the current situation with the virus. Um, mm. I've got friends in Japan who don't believe that masks work. Don't believe in any of that stuff. They still wear it because you have to play the team game. Um, Whereas in the UK, like you say, you have that priority towards individuality in some contexts, which can be very, I think you'd say it can be very freeing, but can also cause a little bit of chaos when you need everyone to pull together. Yeah, I mean, more kind of important, where right? Japanese said, we, we yeah. do it, we help each other. And here, I want to do it, I do this, yeah. I don't do this. 
I mean, again, we should do in the COVID pandemic situation that you said about wearing masks, of course. Uh, oh my God, we got mask warden the other day. <laughs> so I want a mask in the shop and other guys didn't. The mask warden came, excuse me, you have to wear the mask. You have mask and wardens? Mask warden, yeah. Then he said, but she wearing the mask, protect you. You have to wear the mask, protect her in uh, the shop. Yeah. I mean, corner shop. Then I said, don't worry about it. He's just remind you. He's not arrest you. And then the mask warden, yeah, I'm, I'm just remind you. Funny thing is, is that in Japan, I guess everyone is a mask warden because yeah. except they wouldn't say it, they would more look at you. Or <laughs> not just the mask, the type of, types of mask. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not just cover like, like that. It has to be I've, specific. Oh, one. believe me, I, I've got my tons and tons of issued masks. Yeah, that type. <laughs> So I haven't got my one that right now, but yeah. Yeah, and you know, not wearing it on your chin, actually wearing it on your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I think that um, when we talk about that difference between um, individuality and the, the, the sort of collective mentality, um, mm -hmm. I think that where that can be interesting is when you sort of test it. So, for example, the um, I would say that one of the weird offshots of that is in Western culture, especially in the UK, well, maybe especially in the UK, is the fact that if, for example, you're in work, you can really sort of stand up and, you know, stand up for your own personal rights more than you really could in a Japanese office environment, um, where you're less able to really sort of stand up for your own individual thing. It's like, you know, why are you pushing your own agenda so much? Mm -hmm. um, however, one of the weird benefits is I find that the Japanese as a general are very efficient in utilizing their free time. So when they have time away from work, they kind of value it more and they seem to really like to indulge in organizing and enjoying their free time more. Whereas in England, the, uh, I'm going to go home, sit on my, <laughs> sit on my sofa and watch TV thing is, is a bit more common. Do you, have you noticed that yourself? I mean, that's the way it would have appeared to me, but I don't know if that's something that you would say that you've noticed. Really, yeah, that's really interesting, the way you mentioned about this. Uh, I mean, when I was properly, about, when I was young, right? Mm. You know that when you, because company started, right? They make in a cup of tea, that's only young girl's job. It's not <laughs> the man, right? Yeah. But everybody kind of knows about this. And start at 9 o'clock, everybody come to 8.30, cleaning everything and go exercise together. Nice, sharp, start <laughs> here. Uh, start at 9 o'clock. People come here about two minutes before, right? Well, just arrived at 9 o'clock. Let's cup of tea first. Then let's breakfast first. <laughs> then start in gossip. Then about 10 o'clock, actually start working. Do you know what I mean? That is, that's, that is uh, even both. You know, both allow us to do it. Yeah. However, that's yeah. really interesting, that, right? So I thought, right, Japanese culture loved this kind of sacrifice, mm. you know, even extra time, sacrifice for the company, yeah. you know, it's like a, all the benefit, but company also look after you. So that's why, you know, who that, once you got the job until retirement, they kind of work together, you know, that is based on good for the society, good for the country. That's what we've been doing that, but has been changing. Yeah. They're more like, uh, this is ridiculous. If you're 9 to 5, 9 to 5. If you're more than that, you know, extra time. Well, the... Pay for, should be paid for that. But there's some of... Yeah. The, the overtime but laws obviously reason. changed a lot recently in Japan as well. Yeah. yeah. So, no, even 5 o'clock finished, but they're not going to... No one go home. Just has to be sacrificed, you know, like a more... Then showing how much I actually really effective on income or on the company business you know look at me look at me or sometimes just never say that but <laughs> difficult to leave or or some boss says let's go to drink together my generation so difficult say no i want to go home then watch the youtube no we can't say that but now <laughs> younger people they i'm sorry i have to go now after five that is good to be honest with you but at the same time you know at the company's point of view, is a little bit difficult. But yeah. always pros and cons. But then I recently realized that because in London, so many Eastern European people come to the workplace. Mm. Eastern European people like Japanese. They love uh, extra work. They're really strict. That's true, actually. Yeah. Not all of it, but I just realized that who I As quite, a general. You know, generally, general, yeah. Mm. So, um, 
then the day said, oh, British people are lazy. Oh, it's not lazy. <laughs> it's just a different <laughs> approach ways. It's it's a prioritizing of um, prioritizing kind of like like you say free time the individual the um, the the idea that if you were told oh, you have to go on this uh, work drinking thing every Friday as is the Japanese uh, old fashioned tradition that still exists in many many places um, very prevalent um, if you were told that in the UK you'd be you'd be shocked I mean I remember my my company uh, used to have after work drinks every Friday night and in the case of four years I went once um, I went one time in four years. And I didn't like it, and I didn't go again um, because it was just I didn't really didn't really like half the people I worked with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should point that out because one of the people I worked with is a co-presenter on this channel. Hi, Bubbles. Um, so <laughs> that's that's why. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's it is interesting that that cultural difference. I mean, like I say, there it's hard to explain to people. I mean, obviously, you, you pick a preference, you pick the place you like, where you can find a different sort of home in the world. Mm -hmm. But usually there are no benefits without a, a counter. You know, there, there's mm. usually there's usually a balance. So do you just find that when you move to the UK, I mean, as you said, you found yourself a bit different. You didn't really fit in Japan. Mm. I find myself a bit like that in the UK, to be fair. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, do you feel that it's just you feel more comfortable here when you're in the UK? You feel just more like this is Miwa's kind of culture. Um, well, in the beginning, I was so insecure. Maybe language-wise, right? People don't understand my strong Japanese accent, and uh, maybe I can't talk. You know, I'm not really talk. I'm I'm talkative in Japanese, but I just couldn't talk, right? Then kind of they then they didn't understand. Just really insecure. Then always kind of really sorry. You know, you can't understand me. That attitude. Yeah. But some point, some point, I just I can remember. Maybe after we got kids, I mean, my, my children, then have to deal with the communicator, then I also become single mom, then I have to deal with that, I have to call, you know, um, electricity company or anything, you know, order pizza, anything, right? So I have to step in and have to deal with the, my issues. Then we become, um, sorry, I can't say the F word, can I? <laughs> oh, you can on here, you can. I'll, I'll clear the, I'll clear the air. Fuck. Okay, carry on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not native speaker, right? <laughs> I know how to talk. This is maybe correct way, but you understand. You must understand that. That is kind of attitude. And yeah. uh, there's kind of more people understand each other. Then uh, I'm not scared of talking to people, express myself. Mm. Then um, it's more comfortable. So then uh, now I know because I've been doing the customer service and I go pick up the old head a lot of um, phone calls, even they can't speak English or they can't understand what to say. But then I have to do it. Uh, after get kind of more, you know, um, it's not hesitate to what I'm saying. Then I'm realized that when I back to Japan, if the same tune, but in Japanese and I was kind of, they feel elegant, you know, I, I'm kind of, oh my God, you, you come to like that. Yeah. And I, oh, okay, so this is the one I have to change that. So, and so get used to it, switch the mind, and yeah. see to what to find type of people I communicate with. So you have like a you have an English mode, you have a Japanese mode, and exactly, you pick your mode. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I have <laughs> Flick to the switch. switch. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think uh, I, I was thinking I, I've had this conversation with people before about there is something of. Um, uh, for all of the disadvantages, there is something of a, a benefit to being a foreigner in a country. Um, so in, in your particular example, I think, you know, obviously there was a lot of difficulties that came with it as well. But you've obviously moved to a country, especially well, especially London, I'd say. You've moved to a place where mm -hmm. multiculturalism is kind of like the, it's the flavour of the day. Therefore, um, you tend to find the people, like you say, you speak to a lot of people, other people who don't actually speak English as a first language. That mm. there's, you kind of, you are not alone in that sense so in a way there's a support mechanism for that whereas arguably i could say that in moving to japan i've kind of had the benefit of you know everyone goes well he's a native english speaker which is kind of like having a university degree in english oh he's native english speaker <laughs> doesn't matter if you're like if you speak like liam gallagher no one cares it's like he's a native english speaker therefore he's our man you know um there is always a kind of a quality to being um from outside do you, do you ever find i mean i do find sometimes there's a sort of a strange comfort in being the foreign delicacy <laughs> do you ever well feel like i mean that? luckily luckily most of the people you know most people people with all, all over the world 
they got image of Japanese or Japan, right? Used to be yes, sushi, geisha, Fujiyama. <laughs> but now we got Pokemon, we got technology, you know, they go, oh my God, Japanese technology, Nintendo, amazing. <laughs> then also everybody said Japanese people can't trust. They go really work, you know, it's good image of that. No, Very positive. Taking, yeah, taking picture now all over the world, not just Japanese people, <laughs> you know, hanging the camera and then going to, yeah, no. So I have to use that, but also I prove, I prove, I taking care of the people. Mm. If they, someone needs to talk, I can be there or something wanted to help, I can help as much as my, you know, allowed it my time and limited resources. Um, they learn me was actually not bad person, actually quite nice person. <laughs> then also I got kind of sense of humor, then I'm using that. Not always morning, morning, you know, oh my God, that's weather. And no, I'm not doing this. Um, I just kind of make a positive. Mm. So end of the day, we are all human, right? You're British, I'm Japanese, but you know, like my daughter, my son, they have Japanese, have British. Some of them, they German, dad and Thai mom, but they grown up in England. Something like that is, I'm personally, I'm never ever judge what they like, where they come from. But, you, the, but yeah. you are carrying the stereotype that you mentioned. I mean, in your case, a very positive stereotype, but you are carrying that stereotype that innately is going to be in the room before you arrive with a lot of people. So, um, yeah. like I say, there is a positivity from that because, and same thing with the English. Actually, the English have, as a general, a very positive stereotype in Japan. You know, Japanese think of the oh, English. Japanese, yes. Everybody think about their old Hugh Grant. <laughs> so, <laughs> I need to wear a hat and then I can pull it no, off. No, they're, they're three o'clock <laughs> afternoon tea. They cannot. They're not. They're drinking a cup of tea. No, they drink coffee more than tea. Yeah, suppose, yeah pe people are like always sort of think, oh, uh, he's English. Um, should we get him some tea? It's like okay, good. <laughs> so, so no, no yeah. that's fine. I'm I'm drinking coffee. No, 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 again, again, we have to. I mean, yeah, cheers. <laughs> we we yeah we have some stereotypes. Then we of course we use some point, but yeah. at, the, at the same time, right, we can't judge people because of the stereotypes. Well, I think we perhaps know that i'm not saying this is a blanket rule but i think as a general people who've moved from one mm. culture to another probably know that more than people who've never really left their culture because you can kind of see the signs of stereotypes earlier mm. because you, you you yourself are living a mixture of between being a stereotype and mm. obviously trying not to stereotype the culture that you're in so i think maybe in our position we're better at noticing that than perhaps other people would be um but like I say, it's it's one of things. It's not inherently negative. I mean, sometimes stereotypes can give you a little bit of a head start in understanding where someone might come yeah. from. I mean, so it, there are certain benefits. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, so long as everyone realizes that you're an individual, it's basically mm. some, as long as they're not a racist asshole, then you're probably fine. So <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's really interesting because right uh, between let's say between UK and Japan, it's not well had the issue in the history. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. But. Uh, Generally, not nowadays, no. but again, some country hate. They saying that they hate Japanese. Yeah. Right. Okay. I would say the straight talk. You know, Korean people doesn't like Japan, right? But I have Korean friends. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. I know. Right. They they um they think about uh, yeah our our some of the some of some people or some of the governments is the you know structure they got make an issue. But is people to people is no problem, right? Yeah, I got Chinese friends. They she knows what is happened between that, but it's actually not really affected. Sometimes you know when we have the argument, I kind of oh my, probably she think bloody bloody Japanese, and maybe I think about a bloody. <laughs> but between us, it's not really breaking the friendship because we are yeah she's Chinese, I am Japanese, but between our friendship, it's not really connected to what they've done in the past i th yeah no I, th I, th I think anyone who's honest with themselves would be able to sympathize with that yeah. um and one of the interesting things i mean i formerly years and years ago i had a korean mm. partner in london um mm. and she was she was aware that a lot of the stuff i you know i was interested in japanese things in general um, mm. And she was kind of okay with that. She was fine with that. But when we hung out with her Korean friends, she was very mm. muted about it. Like she wouldn't want to talk about it. She wouldn't want to address it because obviously she can't really accept it. Well, in her situation, I'm not saying this is universal, but mm. she couldn't really accept to the group. It's not sort of 
okay in her group to accept that she's okay with Japanese mm. things. But individually, actually, she was fine. She wasn't really, she, was, she wasn't, a, wasn't a racist or anything, but it couldn't articulate it to her group. But then, then your ex-girlfriend situation, maybe not just her situation, maybe very common. I right? suspect so. Yeah, yeah the, the main is kind of society not allowed to open talk. Because yeah. so easy to, especially like uh, SNS and Facebook, if she's saying some opinion, that's her opinion. It should be, you know, you can't just judge wrong or right. You know, that's her opinion. Yeah. But she's so difficult to open up within the group or in the society. That's the problem, I think. Well, that's another thing, isn't it? Are you in a culture that naturally cultivates conversation? Um, mm. I, I tend to find that Japan's kind of a, a strange one in that case, and that Japan... Many people say the culture doesn't cultivate conversation and that people don't talk about politics and stuff. But I tend to find that if you actually engage someone in conversation about these things, people are actually, they, they don't feel out of place talking about it. So if I ask someone about their political affiliation in the UK, where it's supposedly mm. okay to talk about it, it, this has actually changed in recent years, but certainly the stereotype of the UK is that people would be, well, I, I, we don't talk about politics. Um, that's changed obviously recent with more of the sort of extreme left and right uh, perspectives. Mm. But in Japan, people, they literally don't talk about politics. But if you say, well, what's your view on Abe? They'll happily talk to you about it. I was surprised mm. that most people just very happily just break into conversation because there's not a, there's not a, an ill stereotype about it. It's just something that people just generally don't regard worth worthy well, of conversation. Yeah, for instance, in America, right, Lady mm. Gaga is uh, just kind of confirmed that I support this one. Then <laughs> they cry, and, oh, Joe Biden, finally. That's fine. That's, you know, and but she's a massive influencer. She might kind of all the hand support her. This is a slightly different one, but... In Japan, if the famous singer or musician just op mentioned about their opinion, yeah, right? nothing to do with their uh, their 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 you know music, but they just then is all the media is massive with criticism. That's very true, actually. Not uh, even allowed to. You're not even talking about. That is a. That's very so true. So it's yeah. better to say nothing, no comment. Yeah. So mm. some of, because even they they you know the lyrics say something different, but they kind of oh. It's so political criticism, which is, I'm not sure. I mean, I just kind of should be separate, you know, political opinion and their music creation. That's just different. But it's so easy to mix up. Maybe, I don't know. That's what I've told. That's the artist, musicians. Not, some of them, they do. Then the huge criticism, that's why they're scared. Okay, we learn. Let us say nothing. Because I they're not really open up. I think that again plays to a similar thing to like what mm. I was saying about my former partner and the Korean thing, and that obviously like she she was okay discussing these things individually, but in a group it became an issue, and that's kind of similar to what you're saying there. In the um, you know, in Japan, I can talk to someone about politics, and it's absolutely fine. But if they had a public stage, then to give an opinion mm. would be, um, I guess you know, it's like you, you have to. If you like, you have to have a, a reason to be talking about politics. If you're a political analyst, you probably would be, it's fine. But if you're a musician, it's like, well, this is not your place to talk about it. So I guess there's that element, isn't it? Is that either, uh, like, w guess why are you talking about it becomes the issue then. Um, so yeah, th there is this um, interesting balance, like I say, in the difference of the cultures. Now, one thing I wanted to steer us a little bit towards, because we were briefly talking about this before, actually, we had a nice long conversation before, and we were yeah. briefly talking about this before, and I had to stop you because I didn't want to sort of, I didn't want to spoil no. too much before the recording began. So yeah, I'm going to, because obviously, like I say, you grew up in Japan. Now, we, a lot of the things that we talk about here, it's mostly, you know, sort of music related as well as culture. And so we got a lot of people very interested about, you know, who are f not from Japan, who are interested in Japanese music, amongst other things. So from your perspective, I was really intrigued. We were talking about that idea that obviously I would have grown up in UK listening as I did to Western music and never have heard Japanese music until I was you know, years older. And you would have grown up in Japan with Japanese music. Now, I know primarily now you primarily listen to Western music. You know, you, you, you live in the UK, obviously you're living that life. I'm kind of intrigued, though, about this transition between that that young girl listening to music in Japan and the woman now who's obviously not really connected to that anymore. That sort of transition of how you discovered Western culture, the kind of the inverse of what I guess right. so many people here are doing. I mean, you know, all about like a media, you know, um, you know, um, must communicate and TV. Yeah. Because when I was kids, right, TV is the most kind of, you know, all the words I know. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> not the SNS, not the Facebook, you know, TV. True. So most of the people, like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Sunday, 8 o'clock in the evening, most of the people watching the same same uh, same TV program. Then there's lots of some music, you know, like a music, you know, like a top of the tops, but in Japanese, right? Lots yeah. of like a best of 10. Then, um, you know, the musician that time on the telly all the time, right? Of course, they abroad. They went to London. They got London uh, boots. They got fashion, right? And they went to America. They got kind of oh, this hairstyle dies. And also, this is a massive, massive, um, you know, transmission for this kind of music next in the world. Mm. MTV. Uh, Actually, MTV is MTV. launched for UK. Launched in Japan before the UK launched. Oh really? So, yeah, <laughs> it is. Right, I remember uh, that was the ninety, I think nineteen ninety three or uh, no, ninety eighty four three five something like that. Because I remember, mm. right? I watched the Cindy Lauper. I watched Madonna, Michael Jackson. Ah, uh, yeah. It's actually first time seeing not just the music, just the video, music video, that image. That's true. That that, totally, yes. That wasn't really a Japanese thing for a very long time. You know, the idea of the music video, that was primarily a Western yeah. concept, wasn't it? Because, yeah, most of the Japanese one, right, standing in front of the mic, yeah. stay straight, stay. then stay singing. So we feel the song, tune, and lyrics, lyrics especially. Yeah. Then you can use the imagination, then it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, well... We got Kenji Sawada. Julie, I love him. I love him. <laughs> he's, he's the first t person to make up on his, as a male singer. He's got color conferences. He got fashion from London, from America. It's amazing. And, you know, it's, uh, the song wise, so many different beats, jungle beats, or you know, hip hop. Mm. Just really, really shocking that time. But at the same time, we're so excited. Then, you know, you see actually the musician in London. And Malik, Malika, we first seen it. It's like a short film. There's yeah. an image that is being influenced by all the musicians in Japan. So it really, imprints people, on yeah. you. it really imprints Prince, on you. It really imprints on you. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, Prince. They've got image, not just, mm. the, you know, not total package, not just the songs, just the image. So obviously, Japanese musicians gonna influenced by them. So they like become. It looks like, but obviously not the English and, you know, I think Japanese. This would probably explain why, really now, was one of a few reasons it would explain why Japanese music is now, a lot of it is very image conscious, probably more than Western music, and that they're really obsessed with, like, images. You know, it's like, um, like the visual yeah. K rock bands, where it's just like, their hair looks like someone just drew it on their hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this kind of stuff. Um, This is probably them taking, like you say, that impact of first experiencing the visualness of Western music, and then going and we're going to do that times 10, which I think is a very Japanese way of approaching anything. <laughs> it's like, we're going to do this. We're going to do it really extreme, though. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I'd never really sort of considered the impact of that first, like, say, first seeing yeah. music videos. And Cindy Lauper, of course, quite... Cindy Lauper, yeah. very popular in Japan. And you consider her image was, <laughs> her image was pretty striking from the get-go, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, shocking, but it's really excited about yeah, exactly. that time, right? Mm. And also, you know, Take a Japanese Madonna, Japanese David Boy, Japanese Michael Jackson, mm. right? Not because themselves, that's kind of copy of this, but at that time, right, crossover, then we saw the, like, visualize in the Michael Jackson, or I personally, big fan of Duran Duran, kind of, oh mm. my God, it's the most beautiful, beautiful, you know, creature. Then there's got music, one. then starting and I don't know what they're talking about lyrics wise because I didn't know the English. Mm. But this is actually how I have to run English because I want to understand what they talk, they say. Most of the people actually learn English through the music, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I, I've, I've heard of several of my friends um, of my age and older, um, especially the female friends, have said that they learn English from wanting to understand the lyrics to songs. Exactly, yeah. That's it. Now, interesting, you, what you said there really rung a bell for me because it, it mirrored something that I'm seeing a lot now, which is mm. that um, there's a general argument that Western music nowadays is a little bit safe. It's kind of gone into this mm. area where everything's becoming a little bit safe and a little bit, um, mm. a little bit uniform. 
And it's, mm. it's drawn this desire in some elements, this sort of niche desire for something a bit different, which is where I think Japanese music and Korean music as well, but Japanese music mm. has been starting to enter back in. And mm. there is, um, at the moment, in the last 10 years, there's been this huge craze of, um, I'd say actually a genuine almost movement, of self-writing mostly female Japanese bands. You know, bands who they write and play their mm. own instruments. It's become a very big thing. Mm. Um, and I think that's a similar thing to what you're saying. I think that, and a lot of them often have very sort of stylish, you know, a, a presentational thing. Mm. And I think that's kind of had the same effect. There's a lot of men growing up in Western countries, and America seems to be a hotbed for this as well, who've kind of seen, you know, most of the pop industry looks fairly uniform. And then it's like, what's this exciting thing? It's like, here's like a, a band, you know, playing their own instruments, mm. which even now has become a novel thing again, playing their own mm. instruments. And look, they're crazy designs. And they're these sort of, you know, beautiful young women playing their own music, doing their own thing. Mm. It's, it's very empowering for, I think, men as well to mm. see this, to see this from like female, uh, female characters who are like this, who have something mm. more going than just twerking. <laughs> Mm. So, <laughs> I think I think it appeal okay. it appeals to um, that you know, appeals to a more sort of rounded and e form of entertainment. And I said that mm. sounds a lot like what you were describing there. It sounds like this is maybe sort of like maybe Asia is now starting to you know, swinging back the other way, and that Asia is becoming the interesting, exciting, different place, mm -hmm. and that the West is becoming safe. Do you think that's a probability? Well, I mean, again. Right when when I was younger, when I was a teenager, twenties, because there is limited resources to what we can exchange, we can find out. But yeah. Now, now words go SNS, Instagram, and YouTube. Everybody can exchange easily, right? Yeah. And you know we talking about image, right? And now you know the Korean music, K-pop, they're more established. It's more kind of sex than people, right? Yeah. People looking really nice and can dance and. Uh, can sing and looks amazing, and they can speak um, several languages, right? Yes. They, yeah. Yeah. Then can upload to the TV show in America, TV show in England, I mean UK, or any other world, right? Mm. So it's more like freedom, more kind of crossover, more kind of limited resources. They, yeah, they more option, not because of the UK, because of America, you know, even worldwidely. Right, the influence are coming. They introduce different culture music, even we don't know what they're talking about. That tune's nice. Um, again, I was uh, listening, um, you know, there are kind of uh, what country? Oh, uh, got Iranian, Iranian music the other day. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. I it's... wish I understand. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I know that yeah, Middle Eastern music's been picking up as well, like you say. But I think yeah. a lot of cultures, probably because of what you're saying, it's this communication thing. When we grew up, it was just the television yeah. or the radio. And also, you know, there's, um, well, I might take my time. You know, American musicians, they cover Japanese people's group song, you know, obviously singing in Japanese, in English, but they, they cover. So that was the other way around. Then we realized. Uh, the Ellie My Love, you know the Southern All Stars. Ah, oh, yeah. Ray Charles <sighs> cover. Ah. Then kind yeah. of we kind of play out. Their their tunes very nice. Then recognized for globally. I I have I have an old friend. Um, he's. <laughs> He's in his like sixties, and he's just got this whole hi-fi set up in one of his rooms, and it's just to listen to Southern All Stars because he's obsessed. He's just got like yeah. he's got bookshelves of every DVD, every CD, and he just sits there, and he just listens to. But Southern it's really All Stars. funny though. You know, sometimes he's he's uh, he's singing in English. Yeah, yeah. But my my British friend didn't understand what he's saying. <laughs> it's true. I thought, wow, his native seen a really nice. Uh, um. This is something which is, again, this is a, a common thing, a common thread in Japanese music, is even if you've got bands who don't speak English, they'll just throw in, like, in the chorus, there'll be a line of English. Um, yeah. There's one band who I cover quite a lot doing reviews of, and I think pretty much, like, 99% of their songs have English titles, but not yeah. one member is a fluent English speaker. In fact, they're all kind of learning English, and most of their well, songs are band? 90%. Which band? This is a band who, um, they were, I mean, you might not have heard of them. They recently started becoming popular called Band Made. Band 
Sorry, you, you, I didn't follow it, yeah. You, you probably wouldn't have heard them. You're going to have to look them up to just get yourself a bit of a laugh eventually after this. The reason being is th this is one of the bands I was talking about. They're an all-female, and there's a few people who know who they are who are listening to this, so they're going to love seeing mm. me explain this to a Japanese person because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this will give you a good laugh. So they are generally regarded as actually one of the most talented groups of musicians currently mm -hmm. in Japan. All-female yeah. band, five members, extremely talented, play rock music, and all dress as Akihabara maids. Like a ma maid, what? Maids. Maid, yeah. So they are wearing maid outfits whilst doing rock music. It is so somehow something where you hear it and you think, hmm, that's strange. And you think that's probably the most quintessentially Japanese <laughs> explanation I've ever heard of a band ever. <laughs> it's... um. And I actually said, when I first heard of them, I mm. didn't listen to them straight away because I was just, I listened, to, I heard the description, I thought, this sounds a bit twee, something sounds a bit wrong here. Um, and then I was kind of convinced mm. to listen to them and I, I listened to them afterwards. And initially it wasn't my sort of thing, but I kind of started to appreciate this is actually really well crafted music for the best part. Mm. Like, these are really talented musicians. Then as I heard it, I started to get more of an idea and get into it more. Um, mm. And then, you know, talking to people who follow music, there was a lot of people, they got a really strong following of like really genuinely music loving people. And this is mm. kind of where I came to that conclusion that I was mentioning earlier, that mm. Japanese music now seems to have had that quality that you were talking about, of it's mixing music with the, what am I image? looking at image? Yeah, the sort of the, mm. what is this? You know, th this would never mm. happen in my country kind of thing. Um, and it just sounds a lot like that that you were describing there is what a lot of people are now experiencing in reverse. Um, but yeah, as you yeah, say, yeah. I think the, the internet means that you can get access to whatever weird thing is going on. Someone will mm. be able to <laughs> broadcast it too. But yeah, so it's um, yeah, it's it's an intriguing, intriguing sort of juxtaposition between what you experienced obviously growing up and I think what mm. um, maybe people are experiencing growing up now. And of course, myself nearer to nearer to your age. Um, uh, although I look like twice your age. Um, <laughs> you are your young, beautiful man. How do you know? Believe that? believe me. When this interview started, everyone was like, "Oh, how did Howard get a young Japanese woman on this?" <laughs> so, believe me, I that ask, I ask Howard the Photoshop. Photoshop. <laughs> there are no filters except, no. except on me. I'm going to just be appearing like a huge Elvis quiff. <laughs> going off into the distance um <laughs> but yeah it, it's it's one of the one of the beautiful things you know as a japanese person you're going to age much slower than everyone around you so be happy with well, that okay, again again do you know what maybe it's really funny though when i when i went to japan when i went to japan i have to get uniqlo first get some kind of neutral you know the clothes were supposed to wear it mm. i can't wear it the dress i wear in here especially when there's a party no yeah. i shouldn't say that when it's the party <laughs> not now not now in the past <laughs> <laughs> that's why well i mean you know age is just a number well i was about to say the, the audience probably still think that you're 25 by the way so you can get away with saying you go to parties no 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 listen <laughs> you know what it's funny though it's right only only non-japanese people or non-oriental people yeah people, i'm young but if you actually see the oriental people or japanese people they know they know my age that they is know. that is the interesting thing i mean i i weirdly have got used to doing that as well looking at someone and visually saying you look this age which means you must be at 15. yeah so it's, like, it's, it's usually something like that because but how about i go i go later from nhs the free flu job because over certain age so I got flu everyone from the uk is now looking that up like <laughs> <laughs> and I can get my free flu jab just by walking in and going, hi, nice to see you. <laughs> Senior citizen here. And <laughs> That's very nice. Very thank you. Very thank nice. you. And it's, it's good when there's yeah, low light and I, mean, I can reflect. Again, you know what, it, it, yeah. It's really, really kind of, uh, you know what, when, when I kind of, well, my, my parents' generation, there was a hippie, you know, yeah. there's massive movement. Hmm. Right, then I used to be really envy the generation because I wasn't there. But looking back now, actually, in the from 80s, maybe late 70s, 
and beginning of 90s, we got kind of really revolution. Technology-wise, visual-wise, yeah, you can tell. You can tell the seventies fashion, eighties fashion, and nineties. But after nineties, there are people that are a bit confusing about how to digging up in the history what they like. They can copy, then using the gap. That's what you you say the girls' band is kind of lock, but mm. really feminine yeah. outfit. So that so juxtaposition is kind of popular because they can mix those things together. So you're kind of yeah. saying that people are able to look back at things from the past and now pick and choose them and mix them yeah i, think they, yeah. I mean they're not from the creating the brand new one because they so exist so many you know ideas already so they have to pick up this and pick up this and then have to mix up it's way more like a laboratory uh you know then the image they have to create but they actually always exist this is the argument made for, um, in the same way that if, I mean, style is an artistic thing, an artistic thing I clearly don't understand, but still, it's an artistic thing. And um, I think that a lot of people have noted that art as a general, whether it be movies, whether it be music, has all kind of reached that point of saturation where pretty much everything has been done. Yeah. So now what you have exactly. to do is you have to find a way of combining the things we've already seen to create something that sounds in its own light new. Um, yeah. So... Like I say, I mean, the, the, band, yeah. the band that I mentioned, I'll use them as a point of reference. I mean, their music on its own, if you don't see them, if you just listen to the music, as well played as it is, it's of a style that we've all heard before. There's nothing stylistically about it which is new. It's, um, it mainly gains its quality through the quality of their musicianship, that they are so exceptionally good at what they do. But there's nothing novel about what they do. It's like, it's just rock. You know, we've heard this a million times before. Yeah. Um, so in a way, like you say, that sort of saying, well, okay, well, we've got this. How are we going to be recognized? Let's dress up as mates. You know, um, you can take something, you can throw it in. And same thing with these K-pop groups. So like you say, their whole style, it's all things that we've seen before. But they're mm. like, okay, we're going to do pop music, but everyone's heard pop music before. So let's do this style. Um, mm. So I guess when you look at it, you can see like individual things they've picked from different generations and yeah some idea or sources you know <laughs> i mean they, they're not copy they're not copy they're no, influenced no. by some idea but their 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 job is just kind of mix up then then become some new be like a, like like a like a cooking you know mm. yeah you know like a mama they say japanese cuisine but some of them Bagamama's noodles never never seen it before in my life. They said ramen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, this is I've never seen this kind of ingredients. Oh, wow. Talk, talking talking <laughs> about talking me? about Japanese cuisine in London is a very interesting subject. <laughs> is it interesting? And sushi, amazing. I've never seen before. <laughs> Tesco sushi. Wow. Uh, if anyone doesn't know, Tesco is basically uh, the UK's most popular convenience store. Like, convenient, they have supermarkets as well. But it's basically, it's your, it's your corner store in most places. And they do that little sushi that you can get in a plastic pack. And I'm pretty sure that the pack is more edible than the sushi. Yeah. But. I mean, it's amazing. They call it sushi. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen a California roll before? Oh, my God. Darling, California rolls is already passed. Now we got dragon rolls. Oh, more dragon like, roll. More like a 3D. <laughs> what, what is a dragon roll? I've heard of this before. Is it like, is it it's a faux sushi, is it? Well, it's like, a, you know, the inside out roll. Oh, yeah. They got like a prawn, you know, um, what's it called? Um, yeah, prawn sticking out. Something kind of, um, I wish I can show the menu. But I, I'm going to Google this later so that yeah. I can find out. i see if I can stick a picture on the screen while people are yeah, watching this. Yeah, then some of them, the recently, what you got, um, what's called Hawaiian? Poker? <laughs> Poker? Like, I heard of about this. Sushi. Yeah, but then got soya beans, they got uh, mint, they got, it's a colder one. Well, oh my God. I Do they have pineapple? Stuff. Does it have pineapple? Pi Pineapple, but mango, Good. mango, mango in it. Mango sushi. Like so that. right, either either sushi rice or um, you can choose another another kind of grain, right? Not necessary. Then they got kind of tuna or salmon, and they got mango. They got serving. It sounds like you're going to eventually tell me that there's basmati sushi. 
they have a basmati too. Ah, uh, that that is probably you can buy from um, Waitrose or Max and Spencer. Really? Like, well, anyway, sorry. back to the music, right? <laughs> so, right. As a Japanese, I mean California or Dragon Rolls, it's not sushi for me. No. There is idea sushi, right? There's some artistic person gonna just mix up. Why not a little bit recreate? Yeah. It's different, which is coming brand new, but the origin is the sushi, I think. <laughs> so, I mean, one thing that I would draw from that is because the, the biggest thing that I've noticed, the biggest difference, mm -hmm. and this might come into the fact that, like I say, I feel like the culture's swinging back the other way now, kind of the inverse mm -hmm. of what you were saying from before, is that um, I think that when you grew up, and I think this is something which is tr always true of Japanese music, is that if you live in a non English speaking country, a country that doesn't speak English as a first language, oh. then naturally there's so much English speaking culture out there especially now with the internet, the internet being primarily in English, mm -hmm. that you grow up with a degree of multiculturalism anyway, even if you're in a sort of a relatively culturally uniform country like Japan, you grow up aware of the entertainment of the rest of the world because it's such a big thing that it's present in your life. Whereas I think that people, certainly of my generation when I was growing up, um, I wasn't really aware of any entertainment that wasn't western entertainment it just wasn't there you know, i mean the the idea yeah, yeah, yeah. the idea that japan would have its own uh, music industry and have its own artists Ooh. or anything like that would just never have occurred to me um because you don't think that way um and then it sort but of slowly you, seeps in yeah but you say you don't think away but also you weren't given that only information because your life your world is really limited at that time but you know, that's why I said. That's what I mean. Is because obviously you are from mm. obviously Japan being very sort of culturally uniform. You know, there's not so much immigration. Um, as a result, you were from a country where you also wouldn't have thought that way, except it was being presented to you through media. Through media, you were seeing what was mm. not present in your day to day life. Um, whereas I suspect through media, I wasn't seeing anything that differed from my day to day life, mm. um, which I think has now changed. I think this technological thing that you were talking about is a big part of that, which is that everyone is now seeing what you saw when you were growing up everyone's now seeing mm. the world presented to them mm. and not just their own uh their, their own view their own uh, mm. the view outside their window they're seeing outside everyone's window so mm. to speak so i think in a way what you experienced growing up is probably an interesting blueprint for what kids are now experiencing in the west growing up so that sudden wow uh well, I mean, yes and no, because, right, one thing I'm really proud of with Japanese, right, we so good to have a kind of redesign the Japanese way. Right? Yeah. Same with music, but it's maybe easy to, let's say, cuisine, right? Yeah. You know, if you live in, live in Japan, you can find Indian, Russian, you know, it's any cuisine all over, all over the world. You can actually see it. Yeah. Right? So, obviously, someone find it something kind of you know let's say iranian cuisine right then come back to japan they kind of okay let's open the uh, promote or introduce something middle east cuisine hawaiian everything you see it every time kind of oh this is really hot at the moment some hawaiian hot cake whatever tiramisu is once one time once upon a time a really popular <laughs> right same time they something new from all over the world yeah uk as you said there yeah then that you guys probably believe the uk is a kind of center of the music of the world so they're not really interesting yeah not uk music but japan of course we we protect it we develop our own you know like anchor right when i was a kid anchor is boring now i'm so feel it i'm so kind of japanese soul it's getting, really Enka's getting a bit of a second wave. I think it's now become old enough that it's no longer uncool. It's now become old enough to become classic. So it's getting a yeah, bit of like a second it's, wave. Yeah. It's a fool, right? Mm. But then, uh, again, you know, Julie's music, Kenji Sawada's music, even 40 years ago, I'm still really locked, really nice, right? But again, at the same time, the younger band, they, they you know, got the idea, they create what they heard, which is so many mix all over the world. That is amazing. That was a really, you know, guy, they, they should do it. I, I, know, 
I, I think that actually one of the most credible things, kind of reflecting on what you were saying, and one of the most credible things about, mm. and incredible things about the Japanese uh, music industry is that as well as being able to accept and take in Western music is also maintaining its own identity. Um, I do feel, and this is an opinion that I've shared before, that um, the Korean music industry has slowly sounded more and more American, slowly sounded more and more Westernized as time's gone on. It's kind of become, you know, molded its own version of that. Whereas the Japanese industry, there really is that separation. There is, you know, Japanese music is still there in its raw, very Japanese form as well as accepting Western sounds, you know, there's, the two coexist peacefully, um, which is, yeah, I, th I think that's a really true thing. I do think language is a big part of it, because obviously if you're from an English-speaking country, most English-speaking countries aren't looking so much at the rest of the world, because there's already so many countries that produce material in their own language. Why would you listen to something from a country where you can't understand lyrics? I think that was the attitude that a lot of people had. Whereas in Japan, obviously, you know, you've got a language that's only really spoken in the one country, you know, but you know what? it's really funny though because when i when i listen to some of the you know well let's say british music mm. right uh let's say for instance robbie williams yeah right some of the really nice angel or something right if i listen in japanese i couldn't feel it but when he's just sound of the you know really so fitting the music tune then yeah. i really feel it, what he wants to say then uh, again, sorry, I'm so love the Kenji Sawada. Uh, he, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> he he sang the Lavian Rose, mm. right? Obviously, I heard Lavian Rose in French or in English, but when he said Japanese, oh my God, it's really feel it, you know. But maybe his voice and the lyrics. But I go experience sometimes, even I don't know the what exactly says but i can feel it because the lyrics and you know tune music is so well mixed and just telling something like a magic word right um again you know the tolkien creates the uh, lord of the rings oh yeah yeah tolkien <laughs> right? so sorry suddenly so he created his own language but right? we don't know but it's kind of feel it so that is a kind of over the language you know people's got feeling see people something even can't can't say but feel it that's slightly different so i'm sorry really difficult i mean no I actually really i i just want i just want to say um what you're saying there again this is a topic that's come up in inverse talking to a lot of uh western people about why they like japanese music is a lot of them have said similar things so absolutely mm. i think a lot of people will be very reassured to hear you saying the same thing um <laughs> It, it is very true. Um, most of the time you can tell a well-written song because you can, it's almost like classical music has no lyrics, but you know what it means. Mm. Um, it's a similar thing. You know, if a song's well-written, you can kind of interpret the lyrics beforehand. It is nicer when you get the lyrics as well and you can understand mm. the, the full detailed meaning. Um, there are some exceptions. There's a song that I keep on referencing, which um, uh, always struck me. Um, it was a weird little album track by a band and Actually, you know, it turned out to be a single, but anyway. Um, it was a song that, to me, it sounded messy. It sounded apprehensive. I was like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get this. It sounds too busy. And then someone said, Howard, read the lyrics. Because I couldn't quite understand yeah. the lyrics of it. I went back and read it. And it was a, it was a, it was a song about social anxiety. I was like, oh, <laughs> it makes sense. Makes sense. It's a song about feeling uncomfortable, about feeling sort of tense. Oh. Like, ah, so if anything, I was analyzing it from a musical perspective. Whereas maybe if I just sort of accepted that it was intended to be that way then Ooh. i would have been a better position to actually understand what the point of Ooh. it was um so yeah i think there is i think there's a lot to be said for just allowing music to give you its feeling sort of just take the feeling yeah. from, the, from the song and also you know what as we discussed before right mm. even you don't know you can't understand what they say then you want it to understand right then yeah. someone in someone explain or someone uh, translates that English. Then oh, that's interesting for for you guys. Maybe uh maybe I want to learn more Japanese. The more learn, more understand. The more understand the culture, more understand the behind. You know the thing. 
that is more kind of it's really good way to start up to understand other people's other yeah, culture. That's what I thought. I I agree. I mean that that song in particular, like I say, it was about social anxiety, but it was in a very Japanese way. It was a sort of idea mm. of um like a school reunion with friends, and it was sung by a woman from a sort of very female perspective. Um, and I yeah, want to listen to the music that song. Sorry. <laughs> I want to listen to the song that I'll, you're talking about. I'll, I'll send it to you. So you'll, probably, <laughs> you'll probably listen to it and go, yeah, this reminds me of being in Japan. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, and then it, was, it, it turned out it had a music video which kind of beautifully painted it exactly as it's supposed to be interpreted. Um, but yeah, so I think that this is, this is really the crux of the matter is that you can learn so much about language and culture through entertainment. And I think... I still maintain it's wonderful the Japanese system that you obviously grew up with being able to take in culture from the outside world whilst also maintaining your own cultural identity. I'm really glad to see that happening more on the outside uh, world from Japan now. I'm glad to see people actually willing to listen to music in other languages. That To me, that's beautiful. Um, I know we said before it's nice when uh, artists come to uh, to uh, Western countries and speak English, but I think it's also equally nice when they don't and it gives them that extra mystery value and people want to learn more yeah. about the culture from them so i think to be honest i feel very positive about this sort of step and just how this exists but also just like i said i think it's really nice and inspiring to hear you give this story from the opposite perspective because you you've had a, you've had like a really good story i think it's it's really sort of beautiful the things you've been through the the big change you've made and yet the way you've managed to maintain you know sort of your identity whilst also fitting into a new life in a different country so i think there's honestly i think there's a lot of people probably who are listening to this especially who may be going in the opposite direction would certainly um feel a well, similar I way mean, you know what i always think about everything has happened has mm. a meaning right then sometimes sometimes i just kind of i don't know which way going i'm not sure what is the right answer there's a not right answer answer you have to find out your way so yeah. sometimes just toss the coin. That's I learned from UK. Toss the coin, head and queen. I uh, sorry, head and head and tail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no man. Yeah. But um. Probably I'm not allowed to in Japan. You have to be more proud. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I love Japan, and I'm so proud of I'm Japanese. I'm sorry to say that, but I'm happy about being Japanese. And <laughs> Don't be. There, there's there's nothing worse than someone who goes to a country and just constantly denounces where they're from. I mean, there's loads mm. of things about the UK that I am not comfortable with. That you know, I look at them and I just go, oh my god. But I wouldn't I would never sort of denounce where I'm from. I think there's something <laughs> kind of awful about that. You know, you have to accept, like you say, it's the makeup. It's what it's what sort of you started in. It. It's what the, your worldview was originally before you came outside and saw more things. So yeah, no, it's it's good to be proud of where you're from. Absolutely good to be proud of you. From. But also, it's wonderful yeah, to you see. Yeah, you I'm really proud of you you're in Japan then you know it's massive <laughs> nice effective you know that's amazing that's great I'm, I'm so sad that we only really got to know each other after I left the UK <laughs> so it's kind of weird that it happened that way around um but this is a, that's amazing isn't it the technology we yeah. got zoom yeah I mean what time is it now uh here nearly 22:3. so you're probably 11 bit later what time is it now? 20 to midnight when you to meet now. <laughs> That's amazing. Look, we got sunshine. We still got sunshine. <laughs> well, we have darkness. <laughs> My window's a bit high. Sorry about that. Anyway, so uh, lovely. Thank you. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say a big thank you for you uh, for doing this. No, um, thank you for having me. Um, Any time that you want to, I'm sure we will be having conversations again. I certainly look forward to that. And um, for anyone who knows, um, in case anyone hadn't worked out before, anyone who's familiar with Jasmine, Jasmine's your daughter. Um, yes. So. Oh, Joshua. I don't know if anyone would know Joshua from here yet. I think Joshua has been safe from uh, my from my uh, published material but joshua's 19 gonna be 20 so should be okay she's an adult maybe i can no? maybe i can bring him into doing some stuff as well but um <laughs> <laughs> people people might well know jasmine because she worked uh, with me before on some projects on the the radio show before this and with a few things we did on this uh on this oh my gosh, she's, got, she's got not only she's not only japanese friends she's got something you know half japanese Amer americano she's a uh, malaysian yeah. I'm, I'm sure she's got so many she she's 
she's really international and obviously she grew up in the, the UK with you. So I'll be talking to her sometime soon as well. So yeah. this is going to give a really interesting second perspective. So everyone at home, you can look forward to, if you like, a generational, a generational yeah. second perspective. <laughs> But oh my god, I just can't wait to go to Japan, you know, open the border. But every day I receive the email from the foreign ministry. They're going to add the strict folder. Yeah. But believe <laughs> oh me god, though. Just, just I want to be. When, yeah. when the border opens, everyone I know who wants to come to Japan is going to arrive at the same time. And I'm going to be extremely busy having to meet everyone at the same Because you're all going to come at the same time. I just know it. So, <laughs> 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 well, I am looking forward to seeing you here. And yep. like I said, I want to... I want to say a big thank you for you for doing this. So I'm going to thank gonna, you for having me. I'm going to I'm going to just say as well to everyone at home, big thank you for you as always for watching. Do you remember you can get in the comments if you've got any questions or anything you want to add or just want to add a comment? Guys, get in there, yeah. Say what you think, and um, obviously if you've got any perspectives, anything that you want to add to the conversation, anything that you think might develop on any points, it's all about the conversation. So get in there and tell us. You can do all of the YouTube stuff if you like. You know, there's liking and the subscribing and there's social media links in the description and you know all that. And as Patreon people, thank you Patreon people. We're not monetized, so you are the lifeblood. Yeah, I should I should clap for the Patreon people more. <laughs> so anyway, thank you though for making it through to the end of this video. So, until we see you again very soon here in Japan and in the UK. For now. Ciao ciao. <laughs> Where's the stop button? Oh there it is. <laughs>